Since people first gazed to the heavens, we've had a fascination for Mars. It's one of our nearest neighbours, and so has prompted the perennial question, is there life on Mars? Now it seems we're on the verge of finding out. Thanks to the success of mobile science labs on the planet's surface, NASA is finally unearthing the mysteries of Mars. As at 10, 9, eight, seven, you know, and I remember feeling sick in my stomach. I was, I was physically ill. The first moment of terror is just watching it get launched because it's on a controlled bomb. Lift off of the Delta II rocket carrying the spirit from Earth to planet Mars. And then it launches successfully and everybody else turned out was feeling sick too, but then we're dancing around and weeping and crying. And, you know, it was uh, just extreme extreme emotions, extreme feelings. For Dr. Jim Bell, this would be a defining moment. As NASA's Boeing Delta II rocket thundered from Earth, it carried with it years of painstaking work and the hopes of millions around the world. And it's a strange feeling because no one here, even though it looks like this is mission control, right? It looks like control, but there is no control. It's an illusion. And even though everybody's got these headsets on, it looks like they're in control, they're just, everybody's just passively watching. It's all pre-programmed and we're just waiting to see what happens. And now the whole world is watching. Expectations, expectations are high. Expectations are high. Bolted to the rocket was an exploration rover called Spirit. Its destination, the planet Mars. The journey would take seven long months. And only then, when it landed, would Jim Bell know if his work had paid off. You created ultimately the eyes uh, of the rovers. You gave us our first pictures of Mars. One of our goals was to, uh, to see Mars like we would. Imagine ourselves standing there with a short rover kind of squatting down, with a tall rover kind of standing on your toes. Imagine yourself standing there looking around, doing what we would do if we magically could get there. And everybody wants to get there, who's a scientist. So seeing it through the eyes of the rover. Seeing through the eyes of the rover, exactly. After traveling more than 54 million kilometers through the solar system, this is what those rover eyes saw. Have there been photographs that have come back that have really stunned you? You know, every single one of them is unique in some way. Um, maybe the ones that have surprised me most include where we saw the ground was covered with these little tiny spherical rocks the size of ball bearings, and they're less red than the soil, and so they were called blueberries. I remember being up on the big screen and people just kind of staring at it, like, what the heck is going on? These well, blueberries are what? Yeah, we think they are a kind of, uh, that they are found on the earth, actually, in, in larger sizes, that they're a kind of uh, mineral grain called a concretion that forms uh, a lot like stalactites and stalagmites in a cave, and that tells us that and the other minerals that are in the rock tell us that there was a lot of water there. So it turned out to be just a phenomenally exciting discovery. The pictures kept coming, including this, a spectacular Martian sunset. I was in my office, uh, it was late in the afternoon when the, those pictures came back, and it happened to be about sunset on Earth where I was. I'm watching the sun set out my window of my office and this picture comes on the screen of the sun setting on Mars. It's, but it's slightly surreal. And it's very surreal. Same sun, two different worlds, two different palettes of color going on. It was just a very, uh, very emotional thing to, to feel like you're there. But the Mars mission is about much more than taking photos. Each rover is a mobile science lab equipped to explore every element of the red planet. What we already know is that the landscape on Mars is harsh, 
A violent environment where temperatures drop to as low as minus 153 degrees. So I'm trying to get a picture of Mars, you see. Uh, it's red. We know it's got two moons. It's half the size of Earth. Mm -hmm. The gravity is about a third, I mm -hmm. guess. So we'd move fairly quickly, would you could, we? You could jump higher and farther, that's right. Very little oxygen, as yeah. you see. Very said. cold. A longer day by about 40 minutes? Yeah, about 40 minutes, yeah. So about the same, though. Mm. Yeah, the again. year, though, is almost double. Twice as long the year, yeah. But because we now know that there was, at some stage, water, liquid water, it stands to reason there was some form of life? It stands to reason there was some form of life. That's an excellent hypothesis, but it has to be tested. No one's prepared to say absolutely. No, because we don't know how life formed on our planet. What will definitively tell us? Well, so definitively, of course, if we find a fossil, that then we'll know, and the cameras are capable of doing that. No evidence yet, although people are looking. Of course, you know, something still alive, something macroscopically walking across the terrain or crawling or flying. Or, again, no, no good evidence for that either, although we're certainly looking with these rovers. And so in the absence of that kind of direct evidence, what we have to look for is indirect evidence. And it's that evidence the latest rover, named Curiosity, is trying to find. Curiosity landed in Gale Crater in 2012. Originally on a 23-month mission to analyse samples drilled from rocks and scooped from the ground. This is a full-size replica of Curiosity, that's just, right. Just looking at it, I get an idea of the technology involved. Yes, a lot of technology. And it's just kind of about the size of a Mini Cooper for scale, so... It's a car. It, it is a car. It is a, a, a robot car, a remote-controlled car, radio-controlled car. Uh, it just happens to be the real one is 150 million miles away. Oh, We landed and we took pictures and you saw everybody jumping up and down, yelling, screaming, and that was fine. And then a week or so later we drove away and you could see the tracks of the tires and the tracks just start from nowhere. It's like it came from the sky because it, it really did come from the sky. <laughs> Curiosity has been on the surface for two years or one Martian year and its 17 cameras are still sending pictures back to Earth. And we can actually hold the arm up. You may have seen the selfie that the rover did of itself. That's what the, the arm is up here like this, taking pictures, looking back at itself. It was the first space selfie. It was. <laughs> it was indeed. It was designed before the word selfie was even invented. <laughs> Why is it so important for us to get to know Mars, do you think? One of the things that we, we try to do is figure out, are we alone? You know, is, is this it? Is life in the universe Earth life? Is that it? And so uh, as, as scientists, as engineers, as explorers, we can do experiments. And, and there's a great experiment we can do with a planet right next door. So it really is about finding out if there is anyone out there. That's really what it's about. Anyone or anything. Right. It doesn't have to be anyone. That because, would be yes. extremely cool, of course. <laughs> but uh, If there really was a Martian. Yes, of course. And, uh, you know, the Martians, if they exist, probably single cell, simple, you know, bacteria-like life forms. That's most of life on Earth, after all. The person who may make that historic discovery could well be an Australian. Dr. Abigail Allwood is originally from Queensland will play a crucial role in NASA's next rover mission, scheduled for 2020. I wouldn't trade the job I'm doing now for any other in the world. It's uh, very exciting. And, and that is because you could be part of finding something extraordinary. Absolutely. If there is life on Mars, Dr Abigail Allwood has the experience to find it. She's a geologist specialising in finding evidence of ancient life on Earth. In 2006, she uncovered some of Earth's oldest forms of life out in the Pilbara in Western Australia. It's new discoveries that we're finding every day on Mars. So uh, even if we don't find you know, the Holy Grail, I think uh, it's, it's exciting to be part of it. The Holy Grail is life, isn't it? Yeah, ultimately the 
you know, the, the number one goal of the MARS program is to understand whether MARS was ever a home to life. So that's the Holy Grail. You may be the one to answer that question. It could be, or he could be. <laughs> Curiosity has already located an ancient Martian lake, which could have supported life millions of years ago. It's something NASA's newest rover will be probing with its high-tech research capabilities. So the, the 2020 rover will have, a, have instruments on board and capabilities to collect samples of rocks and put them in, and soils and put them into a cache, a little container of some kind. And then that, that cache will either stay on the rover in some very obvious place or we'll, we'll set it down somewhere with a sign that says, you know, here I am. To be collected. To be collected. And we'll have a lot of debate about what to do with that <laughs> cache. But the idea is then that some future mission in the 2020s will go, robotic mission will go grab that cash and bring it back to the Earth. But while there'll be much talk on how to bring those samples back to Earth, there is still the grand plan for man to go to Mars. Jim Bell thinks that will happen, and as early as 2030. Well, you think man has to go to Mars? I think humans will go to Mars. Do we, do we have to go to Mars? Do we have to climb mountains? Do we have to paint and sculpt? Do we have to go to football matches? You know, do we have to? Actually, I do. I do think we have to. <laughs> if you want to think long term, right, you know, as the, as the sun heats up and Earth's oceans boil away over the next billion years, we have to find places for our species or whatever it becomes to go. So we do have to get off this planet. So there's also a sort of survival imperative. Oh, Mars could become a, another home. Mars or even farther out into the solar system, absolutely. It just has, that, that has to happen. If you were able to go to Mars and come back, you'd do it. I don't know if I imagine what the, uh, the, the flight there and back would be like sitting in a tin can for <laughs> that planet. <laughs> I don't like economy class flights across to Australia, <laughs> so I don't think I can handle it. This is where they're doing a lot of the testing for the wheels and the problems that we're seeing on Mars. They're trying to recreate with these, these rocks. And right to... now, though, there are a few problems to be ironed out. But you can see how thin it is. Yeah, I'm surprised. Curiosity's wheels are being ripped apart by jagged Martian rocks an issue that needs to be resolved before the 2020 rover is launched. So we're seeing this kind of puncture and these kinds of cracks. What I scientists have already discovered on Mars is incredible, but what they're yet to discover could be life-changing. And Jim Bell and his team plan to provide us with a very up-close and personal view of a planet that is now feeling like it's not so far away. One of the most extraordinary shots I thought was being on Mars and looking and seeing Earth. Yes. <laughs> but there's a fabulous photo. Yeah. And I remember, you know, a number of us knew when the picture was going to be taken, uh, clock time on the Earth. And so we went outside, we kind of waved, you know, you can't see us because it's all just bloop, little dot. <laughs> but just to be able to have that perspective, to be able to turn around and look back at ourselves from a distant vantage point. That's, uh, those are the kinds of milestones that have happened throughout the space program. We are just a moat of dust. We are just a speck, just floating out there. And yet, um, you know, sometimes we don't get along and we fight and we quarrel over things, but we're all in this together. We are all in it together. And it really comes home when you see everything and everyone you know and everything that's ever been just right there in that little speck. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.